Okay guys, so I wanted to make a video to help some of you with factoring. Uh, it seems to me like there are quite a few students who are str really struggling with factoring. And so uh, there are basically two main methods that we went over in class. There's a third method that I posted a video on Schoology for. It's uh, factoring by grouping, but that's not really any different from the two methods I'm going to show you here. So please uh, persevere, try hard, don't give up. You can do this, you can factor, you must be able to factor for the rest of the year. It's crucial for Algebra 2 and crucial for uh, any math class, basically from Algebra 1 onward. So I'm going to show you two methods here how to do this, and I'm going to work with some of the more complicated factoring questions. All right? I'm not sure if I'll do all of these, but I'll show you uh, at least some of them. All right? So these are examples from our note sheet. Our note sheet had uh, some examples here. I'm basically doing some of these and maybe this one. Maybe I'll do all of those. I'm not sure. I'll, I'll see how much time this takes. But uh, let me show you two different ways of factoring this. Okay, so we did the easy version of factoring when the coefficient of the x squared is 1. But here, clearly, x squared's coefficient is not 1. So that complicates things quite a bit. So let me show you uh, what to do here. So first of all, always, you should try and look for common factors. So if we look at question B here, um, there's a common factor, all of these can definitely divide by 5. So I factor out a 5 and then I get uh, 4x squared plus x minus 3. Okay, And it seemed to me like everybody was okay with that part. Um, but the real question is then what does that factor into as a product of binomials? And so this is the question I want to help you answer. So we, we now are tasked with factoring this into a product of two binomials. So let me try and help you here. There's a method that a lot of students at YES and a lot of students use uh, to factor these things and that is um, basically this. So I'll show you how this works. So you take this expression, this trinomial 4x squared plus x minus 3 and you look at the factors of 4 and the factors of 3 and you list them out. So 2 times 2 is a pair of factors and 4 times 1 is a pair of factors. And 3, fortunately, is prime, so there's only one fact pair of factors there. Okay, And so now you look at this and you go, okay, I'm going to try a, a strategy. So this is a little trick strategy that you can try. Um, and the more you do this, the faster you'll get. And that's basically this. Uh, take, let's say, the first pair of factors here uh, for each number, and then uh, write them like this, 2x and 2x, because that must make 4x, 2x times 2x is 4x squared, and then write these two factors, 3 and 1 over here. And then cross multiply these uh, and see what you get. If I cross multiply them, 2x times 3, I get 6x here, and 2x times 1, I get 2x. Now you have to ask yourself, can I combine these in any way? So subtract them or add them or any way I can combine them to get back to this. 1x plus 1x. And the answer is, there's nothing I can do. 6x minus 2x or negative uh, 6x plus 2x or you know just adding them or subtracting them both. There's no way I can come up with any combination that gives me 1x. So when that happens, you go, okay, this didn't work. Now, then what you try and do usually is switch these two around and put 1 here and 3 here. But since these are both the same, uh, that doesn't actually change anything. You still get 6x and 2x. So basically at this point you're stuck. These factors don't work. Okay. So basically what you do now is abandon this set of factors and go back and look for the other set of factors. So this didn't work. All right. So now I have to try these two pairs of factors. And so we do this 4x and 1x coming from here and then 3 and 1 again. And then you cross multiply again and see what happens. So now I get uh, here basically 3 times 1 is 3 and 4 times 1 is 4, 4x. And then you ask yourself, can I combine these two uh, terms to come up with 1x? And the answer is yes, of course. It must be plus 1x. And the answer is yes. All I have to do is say uh, plus 4x minus 3x. 4x minus 3x gives me 
4x minus 3x gives me 1x, which is what I want. I want that to happen. Okay, And so now I just have to say, all right, I got this to work, so this must be negative, so I put the negative here. Okay, When I cross multiply, I need to get negative 3x here, and then here I need to get positive 4x, and those two terms, when I combine them, will give me the positive 1x. And so what you've done here is employed a little trick that gave you the factors. But now how this works is this is actually the first parenthesis or second one, either way, and this is the other one. And so what you've done is generated these two parentheses, 4x minus 3 and 1x plus 1. Okay, this is a plus. And so that seems to solve the question. But you have to check yourself always that if I FOIL this, it gets me back to the question I started with factoring. Okay, And so if you FOIL this, you get uh, 4x squared plus 4x minus 3x minus 3. And this term here turns into 1x. So 4x squared plus 1x minus 3. That's what I set out to factor. Okay, So the answer for all of this after all of that work the answer here turns out to be this. This is the answer. This is the factored form. So then I just write that here. 4x minus 3 and 1x plus 1. Please don't forget to leave this uh, common factor in front of the answer. So the final answer for this question would be that. Okay? Don't throw away the common factor. It's a very common mistake students make. All right. So let me undo all this and go back and say, ah, we don't know what this is, so let's use a second method, okay? So let me erase all this stuff and we'll do a second method. Okay, let's do a second method. So method two, method two, and then use a different color. Method two is, we still are tasked with factoring that trinomial, that quadratic trinomial, 4x squared plus x minus three. Uh, and this is a method that I think a lot of students like because it's maybe a bit faster, maybe a bit easier, I'm not sure, but a lot of students like this. So what you do here is um, you take the number in front of the x squared and you multiply the back number, okay, the constant, by that number. So you And then you actually drop this from the x squared. So you get x squared plus x and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Now, the thing that you just dropped, you can't forget about that. So I would maybe write it down here and say I have to do something with that 4 that I threw away in the beginning. Now you shouldn't write equals here because these two things are not equal. Right? So this is just some scratch work we're doing to come up with our answer. Any case, the, the point of this is that these expressions, students usually don't have problems factoring. So we've done this in class, and everybody was pretty successful at this. To factor this, x times x is x squared. No big deal there. And then you find the two factors of 12 that add to give me plus 1x, okay, or plus 1. And so uh, this is pretty clear that I'm working with uh, 4 and 3. Okay, 4 and 3, but I need a plus 4 and a minus 3. Plus 4 and minus 3. Okay, and so uh, 4 minus 3 gives me that, and 4 times negative 3 gives me negative 12. So this seems like it's promising, everything works. Yes, if you FOIL that, you get back to what we have here. Okay, FOILing this gives me back here. x squared uh, minus 3x plus 4x is plus 1x minus 12. That's fine. But this is not the answer to the original question because I threw away this 4. All right? So what you then have to do is take that 4 and divide both of these terms by that 4. So that's what's happening here. So I threw it away, but it's coming back. Okay. And now what you do is try and reduce these fractions um, and write them as a whole number if they divide evenly. And so uh, they don't, this fraction here doesn't reduce this fraction becomes 1. So I have x plus 1 here, and I've tried to reduce this, it doesn't reduce, so I just take the 4 up and put it in the front, 4x minus 3. Now, 
this trick, that's the answer. Okay, it, that, it, it factored our original question. Now here's what was our original uh, question or trinomial that we set out to factor, was this one. Okay, which coming from the question over here. And so I need to, again, foil this to make sure it worked. So you should always foil to see that it worked until you're very comfortable with this technique and you know you can always generate the correct answer. So 4x squared uh, minus 3x plus 4x minus 3. And you'll see that these combine to give you 1x. So 4x squared, check, 1x, check, minus 3, check. Okay, so my technique worked. And again, the answer is this right here. That's the answer. Okay, so I got x plus 1. 4x minus 3. All right? So those are the two most common methods that students use to factor, and they're usually successful. Uh, there are other ways. I actually factor a different way, but most students don't like thinking of factoring that way. So this, these are two surefire methods that are not too difficult that help you uh, come up with the answer. So let's try maybe another question, one more question. And this time I'll just go through and I'll show you the second method. I'll just use the second method this time. Okay. So you do the same thing here. You say this, is there a common factor? It doesn't look like there's a common factor. So the second method was do this. I don't write equals here. They're not equals. This is just scratch work. I know this is supposed to factor into a product of two binomials. So here's the scratch work. I take 3x squared plus 16x plus 5 and I multiply this to the back. Circle it, multiply it to the back, that generates a new quadratic trinomial that looks like this, 15. But now remember you threw away the three, so you have to do something with it, okay? And then this is not too bad to factor again. Uh, we turn it into an easier factoring question. Uh, factors of 15 that somehow combine or add to give me 16, okay? so. Uh, it seems like this should be 15 times 1 gives me 15, and plus 15 plus 1 gives me 16. So that seems like I've discovered the correct factors here, so plus 15 plus 1. And now, this not the solution. We threw away this 3, so the 3 has to come back into play and be divided here. Okay, And then try and reduce, see what happens. So I get uh, x plus 15 over 3 is 5. This doesn't do anything. I can't reduce the fraction, nothing I can do there, so I get 3x plus 1. So that seems like it worked. Then go and foil this to make sure you did it correctly. Again, once you get very comfortable with the technique, you probably would move past the foiling part because you know you did it right, but it's worth checking the first few times you do this. So x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 1 is plus 1x. 5 times 3x is plus 15x, and this is plus 5, okay? And so what we have here, these two combine to give me 16x. So 3x squared, check, 16x, check, plus 5, check, okay? So again, the answer is not all the scratch work. The answer is this set of binomials right here. x plus 5, 3x plus 1. Okay, that's the solution.